This game goes to people who are not the bitch of their own brain, mm -hmm. not the bitch of their own emotion. Money flows to the hands of people who A, have higher levels of energy, lower levels of procrastination. Wealth is 1% inspiration where you have this creative idea and 99% perspiration going out and doing it. And so the worst, the worst mofo on this planet is a dude making one or two mil. I got a prediction for you. Poverty. <laughs> you can be poor, bro. <laughs> Honestly, most people live at about 1% of what they could have done. But anybody listening, I guarantee you could become a millionaire just on the progress you're on right now with one disclaimer. If you wanted to curse your enemy who's in your industry, real estate, be like, what would I curse him with? Low energy. I mean, this whole universe could be just the Sean universe and I'm not real. <laughs> Right. But I might be in a universe where I'm real and the main character and you're just an NPC. Right. You're just a robot. <laughs> so he said something to me. I said, how much money are you making this year? And he said, I'm not doing much. I'm only making 500 grand. So I went over to my nice chat GBT. I'm like, but that puts you in the one percentile. And you said, well, I'm only netting 200,000 a year. So but that puts you in the top five percentile. You want to know how you can instantly become a multimillionaire? Without changing anything, moved to Thailand, Brazil, Bali, maybe not Bali, gotten expensive. And you're instantly buying uh -huh. power, man. It's not how much you make, it's how much the cost of living is. So let's talk. I let's think a lot of people on the journey will be like, that's a lot of money. How long did it take you to build up to 500,000 a year revenue? Three years. Three years. So most people go to college for four years, come out with no revenue, 100K a debt. So how long have you been following me? About two years. Two years. You're in a lot of my programs. And I like to have people on the podcast. Like I have, you know, billionaires on the podcast and this, that. But I like to have every walk of life because like Abraham Lincoln said, there's something. He learned something from everybody, even if sometimes it's what's not to do, well, you know. Sometimes mm. you learn what not to do. So now you're doing consulting, marketing for people in the real estate industry, brokers and all that. I've told people, you know, for the last 10 years, I've been telling people, you can go at services is one of the largest parts of the U.S. economy. So you've gone into services, showing people how to scale. So what do you specifically help people in the real estate industry do? Like, what's the core product you provide? Absolutely. And Ty, thanks for having me on the podcast, man. Thanks I for coming it. on. Um, so we help individual agents, real estate teams, and real estate brokers. Yeah. We specifically help their agents get into more production. Yeah. So what we do is we come in there and we consult their brand new agents, their agents that are maybe stuck at 10 or 15 million. And yeah. then we consult their top agents on how to go from say 25 million to 50 million. So what is the core thing? Getting better at psychology, persuasion, building their own lead generation funnels. Like what's the... What have you seen the biggest bang for the buck for somebody who's in the real estate industry? Fantastic question. So I would say it's processes and systems. Yeah. I see most of the people in the real estate industry not have a specific sales process yeah. that they run their buyers or sellers through. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because I always tell people, it's like, I've had small businesses, I've had medium, I've had large, and I've had extra large. You know, I've done a million a year in revenue. I've done... 50 million, 500 million and beyond. And what takes you past the beginner stages, I always use jujitsu, white to red belt, you know, white, blue, purple, brown, black belt, coral belt, red belt. Like what takes you past blue and purple belt into brown and black belt in business and making money is really not letting things fall apart. Most people, they do things that only work if they have three customers. But the second you have six customers, everything falls apart. Life becomes just putting out fires. So do you think on average, psycho you know I like psychology. What do you think is the psychology of the actual, the average person who's a realtor or a broker? Sloppy or organized? Sloppy. Sloppy. Yeah, because you know why? Why? When you're good socially, okay? It's a different part of the brain. The most rare person on earth, and I've hired big sales floors and I've been in sales for a long time. The most rare person is somebody who's highly organized and extroverted and social at the same time. They're almost like opposite ends of the spectrum. So 
what's the main thing you do when you come in? Do you t you change your daily routine? Do you give them software? Like, what's the thing? What's what's the thing that changes the game for dis for? Sl so if you're watching and you're kind of sloppy, <laughs> well, let's do a free. I know you charge money, but let's do a free session for people listening. If they're in the real estate industry, really any industry, and and you're a little disorganized, what's the simplest way to become more organized? We align your personal, professional, and financial goals. The first thing, what is okay. it that you want out of the business? Why are you even selling real so estate? So let, let me, let's pretend. Let's say, well, I need to make money. Let, I'm going to pretend I'm a realtor. I've never been a realtor, but let's just play, play a hypothetical situation. So, right. well, you know, I got to pay the bills. Excellent. Okay, wait, stepping outside of this, are you a brand new agent? Let's say, I'm, let's start with me as a new agent. All right, cool. Okay. So I've how sold, much? Well, I've sold one house. Excellent. Okay. And I'm like, it ain't paying the bills. So my commissions are not enough. What do I do? All right. This time next year, how, where do you want to be? How much money do you want in your bank account? I need to be making, I don't know, 10 grand a month, let's say. And I need, I don't know, let's say this person, I'll pretend I'm this Bob. I'm Bob. I need 100,000 in cash in my bank account as a safety pad. Okay, so you're talking about, say, $220,000. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to reverse engineer a business plan that reflects exactly step-by-step -step what you need to do okay. every single day to hit that $220,000 mark for the next 12 months. So you basically break it down by month. That's $20,000 a month. In order to do $20,000 a month, you'll need to close this many deals. In order to close that many deals, you have to open this many deals. In order to open that many deals, you need these many leads flowing in, these many. Do you break it all the way down to the science of like, how many conversations you need to have per day? Correct. We break yeah. it down to literally like if your strategy is out there, I, I'm a cold calling cowboy. Yeah. So if it's expire listings for set by owners, you don't have a big sphere. I'm going to share exactly how many calls you need to make. Yes. Based off how many calls you make in your conversion rate based off of you, how you can close. Yeah. We're going to figure out, okay, if it takes 50 expired listing conversations to get you four listings and two of them close. Yeah. That's what we're going to figure out. Yeah. And then so you like, in order, how, where do you, and you help people find where, like, do you give them a script? Oh, I got everything. Yeah. So we, I have daily role play calls mm -hmm. and basically, so if they are coming in with no experience, they have, it's mandatory. They show up for the trainings. Right. And the trainings are basically role plays, uh, making sure they're, you know, hitting their KPIs and making sure that, you know, we're holding, we're holding them accountable. Yeah. So they can't show up and be like, oh. Well, la 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 happened and yeah. give us the excuses why they didn't do the work. Because if yeah. so, we're going to kick them out of the program. I see. So you're strict. You got oh, a yeah. boot camp. Because, I mean, if you've really put in the perspective, I mean, I grew or when I first got into the business, I mean, every person, broker, team leader, I'll help you, I'll train you, we'll do this, we'll do that. And realistically, we didn't have a lot of help. Yeah. And the people that were not doing the work in the program, they're the ones that were hurting and failing the most. So we give them a certain yeah. amount of time before we're like, okay, this may, may not be the right option for you. Yeah. One of, I started one of the first things, this works for any kind of agency, like real estate agent, but also I started as a life insurance agent. Oh. I did that for a while when I was first starting out my career. Hey, if you could sell life insurance, you could sell everything. All right. Like life insurance, because you're going to people where you're like, hey, you want to, you go to, it's, you know, it's you, tough. you go to a guy, you're like, Hey, you want to buy an insurance policy. So when you die, your wife has lots of money to get remarried to another guy and raise your kids. Pretty much. Yeah. And guys are like, ah, oh. and it's like, yeah, if, if so, give me a thousand bucks a month. That's but, tough. But once you learn to sell that, I tell people start with hard stuff. Homes aren't the hardest. Like people who are real estate agents, I, you should have some half of them be like, you got to go six months sell life insurance door to door. Once you do that, you're going to come back to this real estate. It's called contrast bias. I love that. That's a cognitive bias in the brain. When you switch the contrast, all of a sudden what you used to think was hard is like, oh, this is easy. So, you know, you want to get stronger in the gym. Mm -hmm. If you can bench 200 pounds, you got to hang out with dudes doing 600 pounds. You'll, you'll get stronger in like a month from that. It's true because you'll be like, wait a sec. They've done. There's this book called The Expectation Effect. It's the power. This is. It's a very scientific book on the power of the placebo effect. You know how they got placebo pills doctors yeah. give. You know, and um, you know there's stories in history. It happens every year where like a car backs up on a little kid, and the mom 
who's not strong gets the power to lift the car up. It's the latent power of the brain when it's motivated correctly. And so if you're trying, because a house in a way is not that hard to sell because everybody needs shelter. You're in, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The bottom is the physiological needs, which is food, shelter, water. So there's always going to be a market for food. There's always going to be a market for shelter. So that's why I, I think a lot of people, when you go into any industry and you expect it to be hard, it, it self-fulfills. All of a sudden, it's hard. But like you said, if you just reverse engineer it, you're like, nope, 100 calls in X amount of hours. You know, Every 72 hours, you need 163 calls. And that, and if you're an average closer, you'll back out this much. Warren Buffett says that. He says, you know, figure out what you want to, what your life, what you should be doing today. Let's say you're 30 years old. Mm -hmm. He's like, figure out what your life would look like at 90 Hmm. to get your dream life. What will you look like? And like, this is one of the seven habits of highly effective people. Start with the end in mind. So to figure out what you should do at 30, you figure out what your life would look like at 90 if you had that amazing 30 year old life and then he's like figure out what you should do with 89 88 and just work backwards to what you should be doing at 30 so let's say you want to leave a legacy of wealth to your family you die at 90 let's say okay well if i want how much money do i want to leave how many kids do i have and then you just reverse it well if i want to have this much at 89 88 87 and you get all the way here well at 30 i need to be building this kind of business I need to be doing these many phone calls. I need to be networking like this. I need to be building funnels. My marketing spend. Do you tell, do you think the average person in real estate should be running cold traffic, Facebook ads, Google ads, things like that? So when you're first starting out, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. Yes and no. Yes to the fact that to get known, yes. Because the same people that you're calling, cold calling with no money. Yeah. Are the same people that are seeing you through those ads. Yeah. And sometimes it takes, you know, 15, 25 times yeah. for them to see you to actually get the deal done. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I think a lot of people struggle in the business. They come into the business thinking, I'm going to make two million bucks my first year. I'm going to yeah. sell a bunch of homes. I'm going to get into the luxury market. And they don't realize actually how many times it takes to call somebody for them to take you serious enough to sit down with them to really yeah. get the deal done. Well, the commission structure laws are changing in the U.S. too. So it's like... It's an interesting thing. You got to stay on top of the game because the second, you know, there, there's no, it's simple to make money, but it's not easy. That's where people get confused. They'll be like, Ty, are you talking about get rich quick, quick schemes? I'm like, no, it's simple. I can explain it to you. And 99% of the population will understand, for example, in your industry, what it takes to be wealthy in the real estate game, real estate broker, real estate agent. But, doesn't mean it's easy because people procrastinate. People are lazy. People are sloppy. <laughs> so do you work on the mindset side of things too? Because I feel like people with procrastination, it's like with the TikTok world, Insta world, people are getting just six hours on their phone a day. And it's just sucking the initiative out of people, you know? So you, you feel lazy because I should do this. I should make my calls. But you don't have that like go getter spirit. So what do you do when somebody comes into your program, you're you're consulting, and you just see these person just lazy? Do you kick them out? No. First things <laughs> first, my it's it's a mindset thing. We yeah. start with the mindset because if I don't get them clear up there, they ain't gonna clear. They're not gonna be clear out here. Right. Yeah. You know. So the first things first is I pretty much smash their limiting beliefs. Yeah. I can't do this. I'm not. You know. Anything that. What do you think is the most common one? Um, one of the most common. The most common one. Oh man, that's a great question. Or a couple of them. I'd say, I don't think I'm worth it. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the experience. Yes. And they feel incompetent making the phone calls. Yeah. A lot they, of people at the beginning, especially, are like, "Oh, I don't have experience." But it's a oxy. It's like ironic. Well, you don't have experience because you're not making calls, but you don't want to make calls because you don't have the experience. Correct. And yeah. I was that guy when I was I was 22 years old, knocking on five million dollar homes. Yeah. Of course, you're not going to know anything. That's yeah. that's the point. You know, the fa- I tell them the faster you fail, the faster you get on that phone, or the faster you knock on those doors, or get at the open house, and people are telling you no, you're learning how to yeah. get them to tell you yes. But most people don't realize that that's the pressure that it yes. takes for you to figure it out. 
Yep. So we start with the mindset, then we move in to the sale or really the marketing and the sales. Yeah. Because if they're not positioned in the mindset correctly, everything they do or say to these people, will they'll never, it took me six months to get my first deal because of my mindset. So your trainers at that agency weren't helping you? No. Yeah. It took me, and that's why I think it's so important to find people that have already done what you're willing to what, what you want to do. Yeah. And that's, you know, it took me two years to swallow my pride and say, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing and yeah. I need help. Yeah. And that's when I got a mentor and I'm like, ah, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. Right. And I've been looking up to you for a while. You know, there's a, some other in the industry where they took me from where I was and it's like, this is all you need to do. Can you consistently do this on a daily basis? Yeah. And if you could commit, you can do yeah. anything. Yeah, a lot of it, you know, like the old saying, it's like inspiration, whatever, it's 99% perspiration, <laughs> you know? It's like one, wealth is 1% inspiration where you have this creative idea and 99% perspiration going out and doing it. I, I always say my version of that is practice your skill until you're too good to ignore. Mm. So if you are not a good realtor, you're not a good phone salesperson, you're not a good life insurance agent, whatever you're selling, most businesses sales. Elon Musk is a great salesperson. Bill Gates was a sales guy. You know, Steve Jobs was a sales guy. If you're not good at sales, I ask, well, how many hours did you do public speaking today? How many hours a day did you talk one-on-one -on, -one on the phone to somebody? And people are like, they expect like I'm not good. Like that's a finite state or, or a, a uh, black and white state. Not good, all of a sudden good. But that's not how it's more like basketball. You got got you got most of the world bad. And then you got people who play high school basketball, decent. People who play college basketball, pretty damn good. People who play professional NBA overseas, damn good. Then if you make it to the NBA in the United States, now you're insanely good. But then there's also the all stars within the NBA. This is like hyper insane. <laughs> Good. And then you have the MVP, which is like, or the starters on the all. And that's like a billion people play basketball in the world, they say. And there's, you know, two starting teams. So you got 10 of the best. So when people are thinking of themselves as a realtor, they're like, well, I'm not experienced. So I feel confused. I feel scared. You're not. Odds are you ain't going to get to be the best realtor in the world. So at some point, how do you get, you can Joe jump real quick from a horrible, a no basketball playing person to pretty damn good can get their way faster and think, but, but it takes practice and drills. You remember sports, you know, if you're going to play football, soccer, whatever, basketball, you have drills. And so when I'm trying to train people to be more persuasive in sales and close deals, I'm like, how many drills did you do today? And people are like, none. And I'm like, of course you suck. What do you think this world is? A place where people are genetically born good closers? No. <laughs> There's people who are genetically born more verbally fluid, have higher self-esteem. There's some. But you can. the greatest public speaker of all time was this guy in history called Demosthenes. Hmm. And he had a stuttering problem grow, growing up. So he would go down. This is thousands of years ago. The story goes he would go down to the seaside where nobody could hear him. He'd put stones in his mouth to make it harder to speak. Huh. And it would force him to pronounce and enunciate his words until he became the greatest speaker of his time. So wow. that that's drills. He was down there at the beach drilling. So if I had somebody, if my brother wanted to be a great real estate closer or insurance or phone sales i'd be like were you down at the seaside with rocks in your mouth a lot of people don't are not you know here's the good news and bad news bad news is it's annoying to have to drill and go down nobody wants no it's not that exciting to put rocks in your mouth or practice reading a script or cold calling the good news is because it's hard no one else will do it and you can make all the money exactly if you become good, you can make a hell of a lot of money. And I think it's a very niche market. There's only a small percentage of people in the world that know specifically how to use psychology, the persuasion, yeah. and actually close the deal. Yes. And like you said, I train a lot of jujitsu myself. It's like a white belt to a black belt. Yeah. When I first was a white belt, 
you know, I wrestled for 13 years. I walked in being a white boat. I'm going to whoop these guys' asses, yeah. right? No, you're going to yeah. get choked out, arm barred for yeah. the first six, seven months yes. until you learn yes. to be a blue belt. Yeah. And exactly. then so on. And how do you become a blue belt? My, my, I do jujitsu too. My trainer is like, all right, we got to do 300 of this one drill till, and, and this is what another thing, anybody trying to make money, there's a lot of false teaching going out on social media because a lot of people teaching how to make money have been making money for the last two years. Well, uh, my first rule of life is don't listen to anybody who hasn't been making a lot of money for de a decade, minimum. <laughs> okay. My mentors, like I said, I try to get Forbes list people. These guys have been making money for 50 years, but a lot of people go into it and they go, okay, I've been listening to this person and there's a gimmick. There's a, there's an angle here. Yeah, there's angles, just like in jujitsu. Like you can learn this one angle, but what people forget is the world's competitive. So if you learn an angle and it starts working for a while, other people start using it. And then, for example, if you're doing cold calls with a certain script, there's so many people practicing cold calling script. People start being like, I heard that before. <laughs> like, exactly. are you trying to sell me on something? So you have to be a learning machine also to stay ahead of the curve. Money flows to the hands of people who, A, have higher levels of energy, lower levels of procrastination. That this is a, There's a book on this called The Hypomanic Edge. So procrastination, what's the inverse of procrastination? Is energy. A lot of people procrastinate just because they have low energy levels, which America, you have a lot of obesity, bad diets. Average American sleeps five and a half hours. You're not going to have the energy level. So when you tell people, hey, you got to call 130 people in 72 hours to make your numbers 20,000 a month, some people don't have the physical energy. So you got you got the invert, you got a scale, you know? It's like Charlie Munger says, to figure out, don't try to figure out how to be rich, try to figure out how to not be rich and then do the opposite of that. <laughs> it's like, really, if you wanted to curse your enemy who's in your industry, real estate, be like, what would I curse him with? Low energy. Because as, be, as a beginner with no energy, you're not gonna make any money. So what do you do with people on the because you 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 train, like I said, wrestling, jujitsu. Do you ever talk about the physical part of things? Like, bro, you ain't walking enough. You weigh 350 pounds. Like, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna make it in this game. You're gonna die of a heart attack. Making these some people are sweating making phone calls. That's yeah, you're exactly <laughs> right. I mean, that's why we start with the mindset, because we kind of we kind of like, okay, well, you want to make a million bucks this year selling real estate your first year. Yeah. You know, number one, what's the most amount of money you've ever made in your life? Yeah. Number two, what are your daily habits? Yes. Right. Are you willing to sacrifice what you're doing right now and give it all up to have the life that you dream of? Yeah. Right. So we really take them through a process because, like I said, if I can't get them clear in their mind, they will never do the work because they're going to give up on the goal. Yeah. They're going to bail on it. Yes. So the first thing that we do is we get them super clear. Yeah. Like the first things first, like if I, if we can't, if I can't break through those barriers that are holding them back, yeah, I'll tell them, Hey, you're, you're not cut out. Yeah. And I, they, I didn't have anybody that tell me that. Yep. Right. So if I can show them, Hey, you know, this isn't going to work out for you unless you change these two, three, four little things. Yeah. It's like, I always like to say, we have, you know, we're, we're, we have a Ferrari, you know, this meat suit, we're, we're in a Ferrari, but a lot of people operate on a Toyota speed. Yeah. Right. So if we can just start to tune those frequencies to learn how to drive this Ferrari. Yeah. You're smooth sailing. Yeah. It's like Einstein, I think, said, you know, average person's using 10, 15 percent of their brain. Yeah. Wow. The rest is very latent for most people. And the same with the body, same with income. I always tell people in general, I call it the one percent rule. Honestly, most people live at about one percent of what they could have done. Now, wow. some people have better training, better parents, maybe were born in a wealthier country, things like that. And by the way, this 1% is only recent. Because in the past, I was just in Thailand. I went on a world tour. I was in Dubai, Thailand, I went to Australia twice, went with Richard Branson, the billionaire. We did a talk to 4,000 people. It's pretty cool. But when I was in Thailand, pretty poor country. Now, you know, Thailand used to be called Siam. 
<laughs> Thailand, I think in the 1930s or 40s, the name changed. So you go back 100 years. If you were born in the kingdom of Siam, modern day Thailand, in a little village outside of Bangkok, you weren't operating at 1% of your potential because there was no way, you couldn't start your own business. There was no internet. You were kind of trapped by your birth. So if your dad was a farmer using water buffalo and you were growing rice, your potential, let's say, was to make $5,000, $2,000 a year in modern money, okay? <laughs> and maybe if you were a better farmer, you could make 4000 So you were probably operating at 50% of your potential. Well, slowly but surely, electricity comes in. Modern. My grandma was born in the beginning of the kind of the end of the Middle Ages. You know, she was born in 1918. Wow. That's that World War I kind of marks the beginning of where they really consider the modern, modern age. Uh, World War I or World War II. He had the rise in nuclear power after World War II. And so now, fast forward into the 2020s, uh, that same person born in a little village outside of Bangkok, Thailand, they have high-speed internet everywhere there. My phone, when I was outside Bangkok, I was I went to a little fish fighting museum. It was pretty, they have like fighting fish, <laughs> no Siamese way. fighting fish. So my phone was like, I was going, it was so weird because I was on a little farm. There was three women working there. Like the wages are so low. You can hire somebody for like $200 a month US. Whoa. So there's three women there. They're sweeping leaves. They don't have, they can't afford a, like a leaf blower. They're sweeping leaves with a handmade broom. <laughs> okay, handmade. I was like looking at that broom. I'm like, I think they made this broom out of like palm fronds. <laughs> okay, so they're, they're sitting there for like an hour. I'm like, what are they doing? They're sweeping leaves. Wow. And meanwhile, I look at my phone. I did a speed test. I got like 20 megs up, 10 megs down. Basically, you could live stream, da, da, da. And I was thinking, oh my God, these women... If they were trained, they could make a million bucks a year. In Thailand, that's like making eight million bucks. This is at least eight uh, times the buying power for your overall life. Right. So now those same women, because of the education system, now they're only at like one to three percent of their potential because the pie got bigger in the world. So now this is the good news and the bad news. It's kind of more depressing now because you're like, wow. These women don't have a chance. Ain't nobody out here training them mm -hmm. to live a different life. That's the bad news. The good news is if they can ever stumble upon training, which you can now with YouTube, with stuff. That's why I always I said in 2013 when I launched my personal brand, I'm like, I can change the world with, with high-speed internet training. Those women ain't never going to get a chance to go to Harvard. But they can watch YouTube. They can watch my streaming videos or other people's streaming videos. So your people you got to tell them like yo you live in america assuming you don't have any terminal illness odds are you're you're at, i tell people you're part of the one percent and people get all excited thank you ty i'm like no no that's not a good thing you're at one percent of your potential Oof. <laughs> the average person's net worth is under 100 let's say the average person in america's net worth ten thousand dollars mm. okay ten thousand so ten times that is a hundred thousand dollars a hundred times that is a million the average person that's worth ten thousand or left could have been trained to be worth a mil so mindset's a big thing once you realize wait i'm in the one percent group and not in a good way in a sad way then all of a sudden you go but now the limit is so high i can be excited every day when i wake up it's part of the mindset you got to wake up and be like it's not the 1800s. I'm not born in the kingdom of Siam, trapped by my genes. <laughs> I'm like, I can do whatever I want. Right. Really? People, I got students living in, there was a guy living in Thailand. I don't know if he was from Thailand, but he he's follows me, been in a lot of my courses, SMMA, 67 Steps. He's making 8 million bucks a year and lives in Thailand. Whoa. He buys businesses, flips them to foreigners who move to Thailand. Whoa. Buy, it was crazy. I'm going... He's like 31 years old. Sky's the limit. Wow. It's between your ears. I think it's, it's, you know, it's really funny too. Most of the people, it's the, oh, the mindset. No, that's not going to work. No, it's the mindset. It's like, that's exactly the, what's stopping you from doing what you right. said you were going to do. Right. right. Which then they value themselves less. And it's like, dude, this is exactly the reason we're sharing with you what to do. You got to start telling that 1%. Be like, okay. 
You could do what Thoreau said, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What's called resignation is confirmed desperation. So a lot of people just confirm their desperation. I get all the time like, no, Ty, none of these courses you have will work. I'm like, dude, I got like 10,000 testimonials. What are you talking about? Right. But in their mind, they just confirm by resigning and saying, no, that doesn't work. I give up. Oh, okay. Now you confirm, you lock in desperation. And that gets into a lot of the spiritual aspect of it too. It's like you're, you're literally closing the door right. on what can be. Yeah. You know? So it's like you're, you're closing the floodgates. It's like you're, you're literally affirming that you don't want what it is that you actually want out right. of this life. Yeah, people need to study what's called uh, M theory or some people call it string theory, but I mean, that's a part. M theory says there's, you know, I think 10 to the 500 power parallel universes. And there's a version of you, every possible imagination you could have. There's a rich version of you, a poor version. Version of you has perfect health. A version of you has cancer. The, every one of those, 10 to 500 power is a big number. That's I think huge. all the sand grains <laughs> in the entire world, if then all those, you counted those. And then on top of that, each of those grains of sand had another earth with all grains of sand. I think that's only 10 to the 17th power. Whoa. So 10 to the 500 power is almost infinite. But with string theory, you know, there's parallel universes. That they say they're like one micron away from you, mm -hmm. but they they vibrate. The, string theory says there's these strings. It's smaller than atoms. The universe is made up of strings that vibrate. And um, so you change your vibration. You can just, I, I think the reason there's religion as we know it with things like prayer and manifestation people coming back from the dead. Most religions have some version of this. Maybe you just skip into a parallel universe that's happening at the same time. And so all of a sudden you're praying that this will happen. It doesn't happen in the universe you're in. That one is locked in. They, time is probably an illusion. It's called the block theory of time. So this each universe has a locked in fate. You can't change. But you could just in a mic, skip to the one that's one micron away from you. And to you, it'll be, you don't even realize you jumped. But that's like prayer or manifestation or po power of positive thinking. Do you think that, do you think that when you jump that timeline? Yeah. Do you think? But it's not time, I don't like jump timeline. I don't think it's accurate. Okay. Uh, how, uh, the string, the, the, are you jump? jump you, parallel universe, multiverse, uh, uh, uh. parallel. So do you think when we jump, mm -hmm. does that other parallel, does it stop or is it running at the same time? No. That's what I said. Time is just for us small brain homo sapiens. We're not smart. We may be smarter than earthworms or birds or something. Chickens on my farm, I'm smarter than they are in general. <laughs> Although chickens can recognize 150 other chickens and tell them all apart. I can't tell chickens apart. So they might be smarter than me on chickenness. But um, I think, yeah, we. it's hard for humans to speak without concept of time. But since we're kind of dumb, we feel time as if yesterday, today, tomorrow, but likely there's, it's just a block. So I think the parallel universe, there's no free will in that parallel universe. The way you experience free will is by switching uh, parallel universes. I see. What yeah. do you think happened? The chicken or the egg first? Chicken or the egg? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you ask quant, my grandpa was an astrophysicist. Quantum physics has come a long ways. Um, it it depends. A lot of smart people think the universe was always here. And then there's a lot of smart people, scientists, who think there was something like a Big Bang. Mm -hmm. you know? But there's, there's people that don't... There's people who think, yes, there was a Big Bang, but it's just like there was many Big Bangs. So it, it's... You have... This is... A, all theory nobody knows right so i'm very into like practical and one thing i've seen practically is people who win in this parallel universe they follow a set of rules and one of those rules is if you're sure you can't build a skyscraper you'll never even start the architecture and i guarantee you you will self-fulfill it's no one ever <clears throat> accidentally wakes up and goes I suck as an architect. I don't know anything about building anything. And then magically, like, in the, they sleepwalk and wake <laughs> up like, oh, Ty, I'm not going to believe it. 
I built a skyscraper. No, skyscraper is deliberate pre-thought. You first think, now maybe you get training. You become an architect. I know a guy, one of my first mentor, my first mentor that's net worth was over $500 million built skyscrapers. Built them up in Portland, some in Texas. I remember going to his house. They had a 40,000 square foot house. That's a mm, big. That's a big building. My place in Beverly Hills was 17,000 square feet with oh. 17 bedrooms, 18. People thought that was big. I was like, no. That was like this guy's guest house. Jeez. And he told me, he's like, you know, first, it's in the mind. He gets an idea like, there should be a skyscraper right there in downtown Portland. Then he gets the idea. Okay, who owns that piece of land now? Okay, I'm gonna go talk to that. And he has an idea how he can negotiate. So it's it's all that's why, you know, a lot of people know me as the guy who said knowledge. And I'm like, well, here's the succession of things. You have you have God, and that's then there's knowledge. So it's like God or the beginning of time with if you're an atheist, you have God. That's the highest power. The second highest thing in this parallel universe is knowledge for humans I'm talking about, not if you're a meteor or something. Knowledge is second because out of knowledge, you can be creative. If you don't know anything, it's hard to be creative. I don't know nothing about building skyscrapers, so I have no creative ideas. I'm not like, yo, let's design it with this type of, I don't know anything. So you have physics, God, then you have knowledge. And humans can acquire knowledge. And then you become creative. So creative is re is taking all the knowledge you have, like blocks, and reshuffling them around. So Elon Musk was like, hmm, there's a car company. BMW has an i8 car. It's electric. It's kind of good. But let me change some things around. Let me make it faster. Let me, he changed the axles. Let me, uh, let me make the engine fat, that could go 0 to 60 in two seconds. He changed existing pieces around that all happened in his brain and so then wealth is created the wealthiest person i consider somebody's given me mentor advice is steve ballmer who's now the ninth richest man in the world he's worth 110 billion i remember having just one-on-one -on -one dinner with him and we talked for hours and i was like if you had to sum up wealth in one word and he is a qualified man to speak on this subject he was the CEO of Microsoft for 20 years, which is now worth $2.7 trillion. Mm -hmm. He said, creativity. If you're not creative, you're not going to be wealthy. And if you don't have knowledge, you can't be creative. And how do you get knowledge? Training and drilling. Drill. What drill, drill like a basketball player drills. It's like they get knowledge how to dribble the ball, how to kick the ball. That's all. That's all. You know, if you're playing football, soccer, like how many times have you practiced? And then as you practice, you get muscle memory, which is like knowledge, physical knowledge in the body. And then everybody is all now talking to the modern world about habits. Habits are not that good. You have the conscious mind, which is like where you fail a lot. You procrastinate at the conscious level. Then below that, you have the subconscious. That's habits. So you can improve your habits, but it's not that good. The unconscious mind is level three which is instincts. You see, when LeBron James or Ronaldo or Michael Jordan played their sport, it wasn't a habit anymore. It was an instinct. And that's why they can do crazy things. on the Like Kyrie Irving, if you watch basketball, this dude's doing stuff nobody's ever done. The way he spins the ball off the backboard. And, you know, it's interesting. He practices it the most. He has these weird drills that he does for hours. Got to throw the ball off every – no one's ever done that in basketball history like him. Wow. He, he was naturally gifted, but he trained and ran himself through drills. Kobe Bryant used to say, I got to shoot 800 shots before practice. You know, he won five rings. And it, by the time he died, he was also worth about 500 million bucks. So that's that's why I said God or physics, the laws of the universe, knowledge acquisition, creativity created, wealth enjoyed. But a lot of people like to skip those steps. Those some people are religious. So they're like, oh, I have God. But I'm like, but do you need the two things in between too? Mm -hmm. I was with somebody the other day and they didn't, I was in a Ferrari. Some friends were visiting from Norway. And I, I go, we get all the way, and there's no, they didn't have a seatbelt on. And I had the top down. I said, 
put the damn seatbelt on in my car because if we, it's a fast car, if we crash, you're going to shoot out and die. And she goes, well, I believe in God. And I said, well, God gave you a brain. Right. <laughs> so you, God, you can't just say God didn't want me to wear a seatbelt. God didn't build Ferraris. That came out of the knowledge of the human brain, which you could that. say came from God. But if you're trying to make money as a realtor, as an agent, I ask people, how much do you really know? That you should you should drill your people. Like, oh, you feel inexperienced? Okay, let's fix that in 67 days. I'm gonna drill you. You you memorize all this stupid shit in high school. I'm gonna have you memorize everything about the industry. You should give them you know what'll be good for your business? I got huh. an idea for you. Pre-made flashcards. Hmm. You put the hundred sixty-seven best ideas in any. It could be real estate contracts, sales, closing deals, commission rates, contracts, whatever it is. And you do one flashcard on the front has a question, on the back has a detailed answer. And then I tell people, put that on your, hopefully people brush their teeth that are working with you. You put that right on the bathroom sink. You should make them plastic cards so they don't get wet. And while you brush your teeth, you're supposed to brush your teeth for two to four minutes. You just flip through them. It's, they're one of the richest dudes I know. He's making about $200 million a year right now, $50 million net. He is a big flashcard guy, even though he's making $50 million after taxes. Jesus. That's crazy money. Right. Very few, even billionaires don't put $50 million in their pocket. Hmm. He's all humble. He's out here drilling. And then I meet people making fifty grand, and I'm like, where's your flashcards? Oh, I don't need them. Oh, I got a prediction for you. Poverty. <laughs> you can be <laughs> poor, bro. You better practice. I mean, it's huge. I think the uh, repetition is the mother of all learning, they yes. say. And I feel like if you're not drilling every day, like, what are you doing? Yes. Like, what? Like, and I, I feel like, okay, like, for the top agents that think they're so good that they can't, they, they don't need the training. Yeah. I feel like they need it the most because I can, yes. I can take a brand new agent that's committed, has a great attitude, and I can take them from zero to 10 million in their first year of sales. Yeah. But the guy that's stuck at 50 million, yeah. he just he's not willing yeah. to learn what he missed yep. to get him to that extra 50 million per year. Yeah, there's a famous uh, poem. I forget how it goes, but it says, it's talking about a well, a well of knowledge. And it says, drink deeply or not at all. Ooh. So basically, people who are completely inexperienced, a lot of my most successful people started with me under 20. Basically, the richest kid in almost every country in the world is one of my students. Like the sub 30 year olds, like Brazil. I was just with one software company got valued at 600 million. Wow. I was in Dubai, top guys in Dubai. Denmark, top Danish guys. Uh, wow. France, top wow. French guy. Um, and so I always say, I like to work with like, because they're humble. At 18, this one kid, Casper in Denmark, his mom once got on a FaceTime with me crying. She's like, you made my son a millionaire while he was in high school, bought me a house. Wow. And she's like, Casper, he was 16 when he started. And I was like, build a social media marketing agency, launch. And he's like, okay, no resistance. Cause he was, he saw himself as a beginner. And then I do well with people. I'm helping a guy, you were just at my event. You're in my syndicate thing. Mm -hmm. And um. There was a guy there who's in his 50s that I'm helping sell his company. He turned down 120 million cash. Wow. Now we're trying to give him about 200 mil. And he's ultimate rags to riches story. He was born in a the jungle in Africa and doesn't know his birthday. No way. Yeah. It, his dad had eight wives. Yeah. He's the ultimate American rags to riches. He came to America. But my point is, those guys listen, like super experienced people will listen when I'm training. And the worst. The worst mofo on this planet is a dude making one or two mil. This guy is probably the smartest person he's ever met in his like family and little town he grew up in. But he's not that experienced, but he's cocky. Mm. Those guys, people get stuck at the one to two mil gross level. Even it's hard. Most people never break 10 million gross. And it's because you get too much pride. You know, the beginners don't have pride. And the people making a hundred million, they realize that, oh, you could mess up at any time. You know, it's like Donald Trump's been bankrupt three times or whatever. Right. Right. The average billionaire has been bankrupt once or more in the United States. Hmm. They did a survey, the millionaire next door. So I like to work with those two pockets. And you've probably seen that with your age. You get these people making 200 grand a year and they're like, no, no, I already know everything. It's I, and that's that's 
that's, and I walk into brokers, you know, say a brokerage has, you know, 150 agents. Yeah. The first thing I tell the broker, the owner, yeah. are you ready to lose 50% of your agents? Yes. Because the 50% that aren't going to take the training serious, yeah. they're going to leave. Yeah. And we're going to bring in the people that will they take bring a new you one. Exactly. where you want to go. Yeah. When you're hiring for sales, it's like in with, out with the old, in with the new. By the way, if somebody listening wants to reach out and find out about your training, what's your Instagram? We'll, we'll put a link below, but what's your Instagram? It's a Sean dot Ginsburg, S E A N dot G I N S B U R G. So go to Instagram, follow you, and send you a direct message. Just put in the word training, a little keyword, and we'll we'll put a link below if you're watching. But if you're listening, uh, you can also just go to tylopez dot com slash Sean G, S E A N G. And that'll redirect. I'll have my team redirect that to your Instagram. But I like that for, by the way, practical note, realtors should get their Instagram going. That's the modern business card. I see some people have the worst. I have a guy who works for me. He's more of like, he's a big dude. We'll take him out to events. He has two followers. I'm always like, Craig, how'd you get two followers only? You use both, even spammers get more than two. But do you think it's important for somebody who's an, an agent, salesperson to have a decent Instagram? A thousand percent because yeah. it's, it's your, it's your, well, number one, obviously it's your business card nowadays. Yeah. But I think to show the sellers what you're doing and how you can market their property and how much, yes. you know, status you have. I mean, yes. this, I mean, I've taken two, $3 million listings just because based off the video edits that I've yes. done and posted on Facebook and Instagram and then ran ads to capture buyers that were looking in that specific neighborhood or yeah. around the world. So I think it's huge. It's probably yeah. the number one thing I would tell them to do. Do you, so in your training where people pay you to get trained by you, do you have a module teaching Instagram? Yes. Okay. So all social media, Google, everything. What it, what's the different package price points? Just approximately, if somebody so wants to come to you. The lowest of the lowest, say five grand, all the way up to say 150 grand. Gotcha. And is it usually individual agents or is it like brokerages hiring you? Well, I think that there's a window of opportunity. It's brand new real estate agents that are yeah. willing to take this serious, that are committed yeah. to helping more people and making more money. Yeah. And, you know, I work with uh, small teams, big teams, and brokers. Ultimately, yes, it's typically brokerages. Yeah. But you always have those individual agents that are willing to really pull the trigger and make a change. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the things that I tell people, if you study entrepreneurs, it's weird. What makes you great, what makes entrepreneurs great also makes them weak. <laughs> it's kind of how the world goes. They're like kryptonite. They're like Superman who was born in Krypton. That made him great, but it's also his weakness, Krypton, you know, or <laughs> Kryptonite. Right. And humans are the same way because to be an entrepreneur, you're usually a little more self-sufficient. Like everybody needs a nine to five corporate job. You're like, no, I'm going to become a realtor. I'm going to get into phone sales. I'm going to do high ticket closing. I'm going to build a website. You know, I'm going to build an agency, blah, blah, blah. So that's good. And they call this the optimal, it's called the optimal frontier. So you improve your self-sufficiency, life gets better. But if you become too self-sufficient, all of a sudden it goes over as the optimal point. You want to stop there. And, and if it becomes too self-sufficient, you stop listening to people. I think it's interesting. If you, the wealthiest person really of all time, especially in the last 500 years, is Mark Zuckerberg. Hmm. Because he was the only person worth $100 billion net worth by age 37. That's crazy. Like wow. Elon Musk wasn't even a billionaire until his 40s. Warren Buffett wasn't a billionaire until his fifties, so nobody's ever built on. And what? And so, if you look at him, he started Facebook and he made a lot of money. But then, I think somewhere I don't know the year, but let's say two thousand seven, two thousand eight. After he was already super rich, he wasn't too self sufficient, and he called Steve Jobs and he's like, "Will you mentor me?" Wow. And so he had until Steve Jobs died, he was getting personally one on one mentored by Steve Jobs, who was 20, 30 years older. That's crazy. But but what's smart about Zuckerberg that people don't realize is a lot of people, when you make your first billion, you would think cocky, like, I know what I'm doing. Mark Zuckerberg stayed humble, didn't get too self-sufficient. And he's like, I still need more mentors. A lot of the one thing, you know, I'm in business 
I sold one business that, but I've been in business in the last five years with three guys on the Forbes list. So these are, these aren't like social media rich guys that say that these are verified Forbes listers. And, um, one thing they are definitely a weird combo of cocky and humble. And so you got to kind of be cocky enough to be like, I'm going to make it and I'm going to do whatever it takes. Yeah, you got to be humble enough to be like, I don't know everything. Let me go pay people. My friend that's doing 200 million, he's the first guy, 2009, he's the first guy that ever got me on consultants. I wasn't hiring consultants. I, I was already, you know, a millionaire. But I wasn't hiring consultants. And this guy was just, he was doing 6 million net a month at one point. Mm. He probably made about 50 million. This was way back in 2008, 2009. He used to come to my house, play basketball. My here in my garage house in the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. And I'm I was like, dude, what are you doing? And he, like, cause he had the best copywriting, the best marketing. He goes, Oh, I got that idea from this consult. And I was like, oh. And he, another thing I pointed out is like, oh, a different consult. I was like, dude, how many consultants do you have? He's like, dude, I like to keep around 10 all the time. And he's like, most of them I'm wasting my money on, but they'll give me one idea. I'll pay. He usually paid him like 10 grand a month. So he was dropping about 100,000 a month. I, I started doing it after. At one point, I was spending 250 a month on consultants, mentors, and trainers and traveling to them. 250 a month. Yeah. I'm not, my accountant was like, awesome. bro, you got to stop. He's like, you're insane. I was like, why I make more money? Because self sufficiency, the thought you could figure out everything on your own. One thing I tell people, everybody, anybody listening, I guarantee you could become a millionaire just on the progress you're on right now with one disclaimer, if you live to 250, because your learning track is like this slow. Most people learn as they get older, you learn some shit, but then the average human dies at 80. So if you have a slow learning curve like this, here's the million, multi-million, right. great. At 250, you hit your goal. So you got two choices. Learn faster, increase the curve, or anti-aging stuff. Do what that dude's doing who's trying to become 18 years yeah, old again. You could drink vampire blood or human blood Jesus. and uh, do all this stuff. So you got two, two choices. Learn a hell of a lot faster or learn how to not die. Then everybody on earth will be a multimillionaire. What would you say to learn faster? How could somebody learn faster? buy knowledge that it's in other people's brains now that can be cheap with a book you know i'm buying dude i i'm i, I don't know how people don't like books it's crazy something crazy happened in my brain i i swear of any store in the world when i'm in a barnes and noble or similar store i don't i, I must have a weird hypnotized i release more dopamine it's like cocaine for me i'm like i was just in barnes and noble at the grove yeah, Did you, you walked in there with me. Yeah, I was. Well, we were out. Yeah, we were right there. I mean, would you buy like the, fifteen books? It's the biggest Barnes and Noble, in, I think, in America, or the most variety. Did you get fifteen books? I got fifteen, dude. <laughs> I, I I brought them all here on this trip, and I was just reading one last night on the guy who who really discovered Siberia. It, he really started the Cold War. Whoa, U.S. versus Russia in the eighteen hundreds by exposing how Russia was sending everybody to Siberia, but. Every book like that, I learned one money-making tip. And so buy knowledge. It can be books. It can be consultants. It can be mentors. I paid Steve Ballmer $250,000 to have lunch with him. I gave it to his charity. He doesn't need the money. But I bu you buy your way in. Right. And then number two, drill what you learn. Because you can learn so much if you don't practice it and put it in action. That doesn't help you. Some people just read books. I try to do something the same day that I learned in that book. Ah, that's huge. Yeah, because if you wait too long, it goes in one ear, out the Not other. the other. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I think everyone's like, well, what's the shortcut? I'm like, well, you want the shortcut? Yeah. That's the shortcut. Buy Go, it. Buy the mentor. Yes. Like, and people always say, Ty, you're only saying that because you sell courses. I'm like, no, I sell courses because it works. But before I sold courses, I was buying access to information. Buy it. Now, if you're completely broke, trade it. Become someone's intern. I have an intern program um, that I, it's not a, I used to do more interns, but interns is one of those scenarios where 
you end up helping them and <laughs> most interns drag you down. But right. in, if you can intern somewhere, shadow, my friend wanted to switch from working nine to five job to opening breweries. And he asked my advice from high school. And I said, like, go shadow somebody who has a big beer brewery. And he, I said, do it every Saturday for two months, 67 days. Hmm. And he did it and it actually works. He became a millionaire. He got an advanced college degree in like, not aerospace engineering, but um, he built for the military, he helped engineer boats. Wow. He became a, mil a millionaire from shadowing people in the brewery, the beer industry. It works in everything. So you can shadow, you can buy books, you can buy training courses, consultant. For those of you watching that are hyper ambitious, do them all. Why sip water slowly? It's like you're thirsty. Some people out here are like, oh, Ty, can I buy a book? Will that help me? Yes. And they're like, Meep. I'm going <laughs> to take a little drop. I'm like, yo, drink fast. Because this world's getting competitive. And if you don't figure out how to make money, other people, they're ready to take that spot. Right. And I think there's a huge window of opportunity, especially in the real estate field. I mean, think about how many real estate agents left the business. I think it's yes. like 70,000 plus. Yep. For the new people watching this, I mean, you're going to walk into the business and take the market share that they, you know, didn't want. Yes. And I personally invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in my personal development. And man, I, I know it sounds so backwards, but it is the fastest, most efficient way yeah. to get what you want as soon as possible. Yes. You know? Yeah, don't. You know what, though? A lot of dudes, I'm going to speak to men because I'm not a woman, so I can't speak to the female experience. Most men are weak, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I the agree. more I learn about dudes, I was just on the phone with a guy. I love Australia. And Australia is like physically tough dudes. Like you go to you go to a bar and you'll be like, yo, you want to throw hands? They will throw They're hands. Ready to rock. <laughs> but I was talking to a dude. I was like, for a tough Australian, you're weak, man. Because I, I was talking to him. He's got a hundred grand in his bank account. I was like, you should go to this boot camp. It's like two thousand dollars. No. He's like, I'm like, you'll still have 98,000. And he's like, well, how do I know it works? I'm like, you have no faith. You're a weak man. Weak men don't get rich. Oh, no. I, I Listen, I grew up never being around a millionaire. I met my first millionaire in my 20s. It wasn't like it is now where there's YouTube and you had access. I mean, you had some books, but no. And I met billionaires. And I know decabillionaires and centibillionaires. And the one thing they have in common, not one of them's weak men. And when I meet dudes, you know, I used to say, Elon Musk says you get paid in proportion to the difficulty of problems you solve. That's true. But another axiom that's my own is you get paid in proportion to how strong or weak-willed you are. Weak-willed man with a great idea catching a trend is never going to make it. This game goes to people who are not the bitch of their own brain, mm -hmm. not the bitch of their own emotions. So this dude who had a hundred grand, I was just talking to him today, and I was like, "You should go to his boot camp. It's gonna. Tra He's doing like a million a year. That that horrible place where a guy's doing one or two million. I said, "You got a hundred G's. I said, "You should always be spending five percent of your profit on re-educating yourself. So if right. you make a hundred grand, you should have a budget of two to five percent. If I make every million I make profit for sure i'm dropping more than fifty thousand. i tell people the only thing you can invest look you can invest in real estate and the market can drop it happens you can invest in the stock market definitely crypto can drop but if you invest in your own brain those skills that you learned at 20 stay with you at night as long as you don't get hit on the head <laughs> i tell people if you invest a lot of money in yourself wear a helmet when you go on a bicycle because right. that's about the only thing that can hold you you could lose a leg and you could still go out and make money. So just keep your head. Like if you have kids, put helmets on your kids everywhere. See people letting their kids on little scooters. And I was in Australia, all these dudes in scooters. <laughs> I'm like, bro, put a helmet on. All right. You could lose your arm. You'll be good. You don't want to get whacked on the head. And so it's minus brain damage. Any investment into the own your own brain is way better than any other asset class. There's no, I've tried every asset class. I buy farmland, I bought businesses, intellectual property, patents, trademarks, crypto. I was one of the first people telling people at scale to buy crypto. Bitcoin was 3,500 when I started telling. Not all that pale, Bitcoin was at 3,500 in 2016. Now it's at 60 or 70. That's good, 15X. 
but you drop 100 G's on your own brain in the same time frame, you can make $50 million, million from exactly. that. Exactly. It's huge. Yeah. And and you could do it over and over because it never gets taken away from you. So. What's the one characteristic you think separates the weak from the straw? Well, some of it's genetic. For sure, resiliency is partially genetic. But if you're born with the genetics that makes you a little weak, you can drill yourself out of it. That's why you see people now doing all this cold water plunge and getting a lot of value from it. Sure. You know, thermogenesis, they call it cold thermogenesis, has physical value, but it also makes you more brave. So you go do jujitsu like you do. You got to fight another dude. Go three times a week. That makes you a little more courageous. So I think even if you're naturally more fear-based, a little weaker, just do the opposite. What do weak guys not do what scares them they don't go do jujitsu right go salsa dance go get on stage and do some public speaking weak people don't public speak start your own business weak people definitely don't start their own business <laughs> it's hilarious spend money on somebody training you because it's humbling you got to be strong ego wise to go to somebody and be like yo i'm making 10 mil but i still need help that takes a strong man a lot of men have fragile ego. You know another thing? Go walk up to women. If mm -hmm. you're a single dude, don't do this. If you're not single, don't do this around your wife. But talk to strangers. Nothing. I've seen men that I thought were weak. Man, you put them at a bar talking to women. They get shot down once. You see on their face. I'm like, so, yeah. bro, it's just a, it's just a conversation with a girl. Nothing can crush a, even a strong man's ego like a woman. But it's good practice. And that's what it takes. Try to get a girl's phone number. All right. Walking up to him at Starbucks. Don't be a stalker. But a weak man is like, I ain't doing that. I feel uncomfortable. And a weak man, when you get shot down, butt hurt. But a strong man's like this guy, Drago, who I say is the best I've ever seen around <laughs> women. He used to say, I said, how do you deal with rejection? He goes, I just say to myself when I walk in a place, I'm going to see which women here have good taste in men. And any woman who says, no. I don't want to give you my number. He's like, ah, she got bad taste. Yeah, he doesn't phase that. him at all. You got to be unfazable. Right. Ah, got to build that muscle. Raise your kids on a farm too, if you can. If you can afford it, buy a farm because kids born and raised in cities in general are much weaker. I got a big farm in the middle of an Amish community. Those kids are tough. Discipline, huh? Yeah, those kids fall off. Amish babies hardly ever cry. You see kids in the modern world now like, they trip, n not even hurt baby screams for 10 minutes. They, they take Amish the phone kids away. fall off a whack. I mean, the Amish do stuff. Uh, if OSHA was there, <laughs> they, if Child Protective <laughs> Services is like Amish, be, their kids, I, I, right next to my, uh, where I live, there's like a guy he has, uh, let's see, he has eight kids. Wow. And they got wagons and horses, you know, big Belgians, 1,200. I got some Belgian horses. And he's just buzzing by on the wagon downhill. And those horses, big draft horses let's say they're going 20 miles an hour he got his whole family oh wow. bomb holding the baby like this and like if they hit a bump like someone shoots off <laughs> and they just stop and the kid comes back on right i'm not get suggesting you get a horse and wagon but if you can raise your kids outside the city at least 20 to 50 percent of the time you'll raise tougher kids man now that's huge because i grew up doing physical labor with my that's father good. as a master plumber i mean you think getting on the phone and cold calling someone you don't know is right. hard? Yeah. Try digging a ditch for eight hours a yes. day, man. Exactly. You know, you, you'll really figure out who you are, you know? Yeah. You, well, say, you say a lot about the unconscious. Yeah. You know, can you talk a little bit, like, how do you, like, how do you access that? Usually through geniuses talking to you. Ah. At, subconscious, you can, a lot of people, when people say they know themselves, they mean the subconscious. A lot of people are patting themselves on the back. Oh, sure. I'm self-aware. I'm like, yeah, you went from the conscious mind. You can reverse engineer your own subconscious. So people could figure out, well, the reason I'm kind of shy is when I was five years old, I tried to talk and my dad yelled at me. And therefore, I've been programmed to be more shy. Okay, that's subconscious. But the unconscious is much deeper than that. So the unconscious has a lot of genetics in it. Mm -hmm. So knowing your genes, you know. So going deeper would be. I inherited the genes of a father who would yell at a five-year-old. Normal father wouldn't do that. 
So then you got to go into the unconscious instinctual and be like, I probably inherited some dysfunctional, at least in the modern perspective, genes. So now you know yourself deeper that not only do I have fear, but I also have some level of trauma. Some people speak of multi, you know, generational trauma. Mm -hmm. That's genes. I don't know why people think that's so amazing. Of course, there's <laughs> multi-generational. If you are born with a tendency towards cancer, that shit gets passed through the genes and you inherit the trauma of being able to easily contract cancer or more easily. So a lot of it, that's why I said you need geniuses. Like machines can reverse engineer your con unconscious mind. Uh, some advanced psychometric personality quiz, not like 16 personalities, ENTP, Myers-Briggs, basic stuff, not even the big five or Hexaco. Those are a little better, but there's some, I built a company, 12types.com, which has much more advanced one, like on your four core motivations. Yeah, I love that one. Um, on a, looking at your testosterone levels based on behavioral patterns in your past, hormones play a big part of the unconscious. Two different men, they're confronted by a road rage situation. Of somebody cuts them off in traffic. One man out of the unconscious pulls out a gun, ruins his life, shoots the guy for no reason, ends up, ruins his career, his family, and goes to prison the rest of his life. Why did he do that? That came out of the unconscious mind. Probably a higher testosterone. You inherit aggression and, of course, environmental things. So that's why I said the unconscious mind is most people die and have zero insight into their unconscious right we'll have to do another podcast if you want to do an unconscious mind yes but those are but you're dealing with that with people i mean first try to fix your subconscious correct which is what you're doing with people which is like let's get rid of the limiting beliefs and then once oh man i love how you just said that 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 can be your next level you can have an ascended master real estate thing i love you can that. have a that can, you can do that in your mastermind do you have a mastermind um so we're literally building it out as we speak yeah so it can be more on the unconscious mind and once we get them to that level yeah. now we can break through to the unconscious right. which is like that 50 million dollar producer we yeah. have to go dig deep man yeah but you for making money you just have to be a lot of rich people i don't think ever went into their unconscious wealth i don't think i think happiness uh, so you can get super you can become a billionaire just tapped into your subconscious but you'll be an unhappy billionaire. Sure. So there's a few people in his. Very hard to crack wealth, happiness, all these. There, there's been a few. Probably Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think. He cracked a lot of codes. He cracked the codes on discipline of his body. He basically invented modern bodybuilding, at least as we know it. He made $500 million net worth, politics, acting. I know his son. They get along well. He's got family life. So... That's a rare, that's a rare, you, you almost never meet somebody who has, who's gotten, now nah, that doesn't mean Arnold Schwarzenegger is perfect. There's going to be things that I disagree with, but he's one of the rare modern world people that's cracked like health, wealth, love, happiness. If you want to crack all four, you got to tap into your unconscious mind. And I don't know where he learned it. I've, I've interviewed him a couple of times. Next time I see him, I'm going to get into the unconscious. I love that. And say, what did you do? Like. How, you know, everything he said when he lived back in Austria, he said, I want to come to America. I want to be the highest paid actor. I want to get the highest political role I can legally hold, which is basically governor of California. I want to marry a Kennedy. He married a Kennedy. Ooh. That dude manifests his stuff. He's, wow. a, he's a universe parallel skipper. Yeah. He's a, so he probably parallel multiverse skipped. 40 times and the average person skips once probably so see if you can skip around a lot when you say skip right when you tap into the unconscious right is this the spiritual aspect of who we are probably that's how people i mean scientists define it as astro you know quantum physics and entanglement and electrons that a million light years away change instantaneously ancient people would just say prayer so a lot of modern science is like come back and connected in back into spiritual it all sounds the same now it right. all sounds like there's god that's the big bang or but the question is is there more than one god but right. then you have hindus hindus were saying that for a long time that there's lots of gods and now some 
physicists think, well, wait a sec, we're just one universe of possible hundred trillion universes. Maybe each universe has its God. Maybe the <laughs> Hindus were right. I love this. And the Christians would be like, no, there's only one God. But physicists also say that maybe there's just one big bang for our universe. But, you know, Christianity also says there's a devil. Okay. And people, Christians say God can do anything he wants, but can God make a rock heavier than he can carry? Well, then they'll say no, because he can do anything, but that means he can't build that rock. So, and then he has an opposing force, which is a devil, which maybe is a god from another universe. And if you read Christianity, he wanted to be God, and he fell out of the heavens, and that's how he became the fallen angel of Lucifer. And if you study Native Americans, they believe is like a turtle, and then there's earth on top of it. And, it, you know, a lot of things come full circle. I'm not smart enough to be able to know all of these things. That's why I say what I do consider myself an expert on or I want to be an expert on is how to get the good life, health, wealth, love, happiness. As to what came before, what comes after, you got to find a better mentor than me, man. <laughs> you got to find a better one. Ah, uh, man, this is great. I love this, man. Cause this yeah, is you, you, you're very into the – you like – making money and helping people make money but you also are very tapped into the spiritual you should you should read more physics books you should read uh uh brian green has a lot of interesting th things i'm reading a, an interesting book on the mind being a time machine mm. it's this science of how our brain jumps through time but we don't quite realize it right right that's amazing i know we talked about it the other day you know the meaning of life Yes. Yeah, what, you asked me that. What is the meaning of a life? I, I think you could go a hundred places, but the simplest answer would be the meaning of life. Life's a game and you win when you find out what the highest and best use of your life would be. For Nelson Mandela, you know, winning the Nobel Peace Prize, working on apartheid in South Africa for Elon Musk, maybe it's space travel or it's electric car. Or for Mahatma Gandhi, it's England being freed from colonial power. For an Amish family, it's raising super nice kids. So everybody has like this genetic or you could say God-like destiny. And so the meaning of life is one, do you know what it is with clarity? And then are you just living it out? Doesn't have to be all complicated. Complex, you know? right. Have you read the book Creation by Steve Grand? No. Oh, man, I'd recommend it to you. It's amazing. Creation by Steve yes. Grant. Oh, man. So he created a video game. And in the video game, he created these creatures. Okay. And the creatures know that they're inside of the video game right. and start communicating with- Is this a fiction book? Like a novel? No, he really okay. did this. Yeah. He's actually got a really good tech talk too. And uh, basically, he says that there's no meaning to life. Right. Right. So if but you make it up. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. the same thing I'm saying. But I, I wouldn't say, I don't agree with that. I know that sounds smart to say that life has no meaning. But, okay, what is the meaning of the word meaning? M-E-A-N-I-N-G. If I say that to a Chinese person, they don't know what the word M-E-A. So we're always ascribing and attributing a pre When I say what's the meaning of life to you, you think about it differently than Josh. Sure. Okay, differently than me. So we can never even have this conversation because we're never even... So if we define the meaning of life, the purpose of life as to what you should do today when you wake up, that I can speak on. Huh. If you want to say, well, when you're 100, will you look back and be like, was anything important? You could be a nihilist and say nothing right. was important. But I think... There's no upside of being a nihilist, and there's probably downside. A nihilist. So that a nihilist is somebody who said, eh, "Why do anything? Because at the end of the game, we all die. And why have kids? Because your kids. I mean, eventually, remember, every time you have kids, fifty percent related to your kids, twenty five percent to your grandkids, only twelve and a half to your great grandkids. Mm. So after a while, you're fully diluted. People say, "Yo, bro, I want a legacy that goes for hundreds of years." No. In a hundred of years, do the math. You'll be less than 1% related to anybody. <laughs> so see. a nihilist is like, oh, what's the meaning of life? You make a lot of money and then 
Howard Hughes, the billionaire, most powerful man in America or, or in Hollywood. Now nobody even knows who he is. I, I met with the I met a guy who was the producer of The Godfather, Robert oh, wow. Evans. If I tell people Robert Evans now, he was the most powerful man in Hollywood. You know how cool of a life you have in the 1960s and 70s, you're the most powerful man in Hollywood. He had it all. Damn. And now I remember being there a month before he died. He lived with my neighbor, visited him. He's just an old man. When I say Bob Evans now, people think of the restaurant. There's a little convenience yeah, yeah, store yeah. restaurant. So you could be a nihilist and say, what was the point of him having all that power? But if you do that, you just paralyze yourself. And there could be meaning for your life because the universe, if there's parallel universes, you may be just the main character in this in this universe. I mean, this whole universe could be just the Sean universe and I'm not real. <laughs> right. But I might be in a universe where I'm real and the main character and you're just an NPC. Right. You're just a robot. <laughs> so you could think about it that way. And it's just probably as so nihilism came before quantum physics. Now with uh, quantum, now with quantum physics, like nihilism might be wrong. I see. You know what I'm saying? So well, good. We'll have to do this again. We'll have to do a part two. So anybody listening, they want to grow their agency, they want to grow their sales, they want to grow in real estate, and they want to work with you. They go to Instagram.com slash Sean dot Ginsburg. Correct. And we'll put it the link below. If you're listening, you can go to tylopez.com slash Sean G S E A N G. Send them the keyword on Instagram training. And you'll talk to them. You can give them the prices and all that. Those of you listening, I always tell people, people are like, should I go into Sean's program? I'm like, yep, his and you can go into more in your lifetime. You know, Thousand never percent. never just have one mentor. That's a cult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. If you have multiple mentors, that's a cabinet. Ooh. The president has a cabinet. I got a cabinet, not a cult. Yeah, same here. Because I always I'm the one guy telling people, don't just listen to me. I'm not right on everything. Everybody has weak links and blind spots. But I should be in some people's cabinet. So you should be in some people's cabinet. I love that. For all the listeners, before we leave. Yeah. From zero to 250 to 500 to a million or zero to a million, what is the step-by-step -step fastest way to get somebody from zero to a million bucks, their first million? Persuasion skills. It's all persuasion. Level one of wealth is all persuasion. So that's marketing and sales. That gets you your first million. To get pat, that can get you your first 10 million. To do more than 10 million, level two is your network. You know, that's when you know people and they give you off-market deals to invest in and you make millions doing nothing i mean that's from the network and then level three is along with that is mastering all nine asset classes to invest in call that abi asset-based investing so level one is just persuasion marketing and sales that's what you're helping people do that can get you to one to ten mil that can get you for your first hundred thousand your first million you could keep adding a zero if you're making ten thousand dollars a year you can add one zero with just mark with just persuasion skills get you to 100 you can add one more zero it'll get you to a million and you can even add, you could add three zeros, but you can't add four. It doesn't get you to a hundred million. I see. To just be good at marketing perspective. Then you need a network. Elon Musk had the PayPal mafia. It's like 12 of the smartest guys in the world he was with. I see. Peter Thiel, Ken Howery, the two co-founders of YouTube, the co-founder Reed Hall, or the founder of LinkedIn. So e even Elon Musk, super high IQ guy, he he sold his first company for 30 mil, but to make his first hundred mil. Hmm. PayPal Mafia. I see. Did. Number one book on uh, persuasion. Persuasion. Or influence or... My program. I got my green belt program from 2017, which I've rolled back out. My advanced, ex, you know, it, sales. It's my. I have three level accelerator. Level one is my money accelerator. Level two is persuasion. Um, but, I mean, there's... A, Cialdini, has a, Cialdini has a good book on it called influence mm -hmm. uh, there's one called persuasion he also did uh charlie munger's book per, poor charlie's almanac has a whole section on the 25 cognitive biases i've added 14 more i call it the 39 triggers hmm. so it's expanded cognitive biases that's on my website but i have it. it's great yeah and awesome. i got more coming on that on the 39 triggers so good man thank you sir appreciate you